All right, so in this lesson, we're going to continue where we left off on the previous lesson. Now, originally I had recorded this as one lesson, but after it became too long, it was clear to me that I should split it up into two. So in reality, this is lesson 13.7, Introducing Multidimensional Arrays, Part 3. But because there's no way for me to go back and edit the video, uh, it's going to say 13.6, Part 2. All right, so let's begin. Now we're looking at a two-dimensional array here, which is just simply an array of one-dimensional arrays, or in this case, an array of strings of text. A three-dimensional array is no more complicated. Let's take a look at a three-dimensional array. So if we imagine that we create three strings of text, And we're going to set all of them to the same thing, which is 1, 2, 3. If we were to store these three strings of text exactly one after the other in memory, we now have, in effect, a three-dimensional array. Now let me show you how that works. This is our first string of text. Now I've replaced the null termination characters with underscores, just so that this is easier to see. So if I store these in memory one after the other, a total of three times, I now have a three-dimensional array. In other words, just like a two-dimensional array is actually a one-dimensional array in disguise, the same thing is true for a three-dimensional array, four-dimensional array, as high as you want to go. Every array is just going to be laid out in memory one byte at a time, and every element is going to follow the previous element in memory. When you look at it in memory, you're going to see this. But what you can do as a programmer is you can further interpret it as being something like this. The key here is being able to locate the specific element that you want. And this is what I want you to see. Whether you're looking at a three-dimensional array, four-dimensional array, or n-dimensional array, it's always going to be a single one-dimensional array in memory. And if you want to locate a specific element of that array, you just simply need to know the offset. And the way that you find the offset has to do with how large each array element is. And I'll show you exactly how that works in a second. So here is our three-dimensional array laid out in memory. Now what we need to remember here is that this three-dimensional array consists of three sets of two-dimensional arrays, which each contain a six-character one-dimensional array. These numbers are going to be key for finding the specific element that we want. Let me go ahead and label each of these characters like this. So for example, the first word, which is one, is going to be the first six characters of the entire array. Now let's go ahead and actually create this array in memory. It's very easy to do. All I'm going to do is copy this exact string three times. Of course I need to remember the null termination character one, two, three. And of course the last null termination character is automatically included. And there you go. Now I can actually use this as part of a printf statement. So let's go ahead and do that. So what you need to see here is that when I'm sending this array to the printf statement, don't think of this as being a three-dimensional array. Don't think of it as being complicated. It's just a string of text. That's all it is. And in this case, we have the null termination character, which is just another character. So what is going to happen when we run this printf statement to try to print this string of text that we've called array 3D? The answer is it's going to print 1, because once it reaches the null termination character, it's going to stop. Like you see here, it's just a string of text. What if we want to print the second word? Again, we just need to remember that we're going to have an offset. And the offset is going to be plus 6. And you see that that prints the second word. Because we know that each word is six characters, we can say that the first offset is going to be six times 
the word that we want to print. So word zero is going to be here and so on. So if we want to print the very first instance of the word three, then we're going to change this to two. In other words, what we're saying here is in effect, word zero is one, word one is two, word two is three. So think of this number here as corresponding to this. And remember, this is just an example. So if I'm saying to print this, it's the same thing as saying just plus 12. It's the exact same thing, which means we're going to count over 12, which is right here, which is the location of the next word. So if we, if we run this program, you'll see that it prints the word 3, starting at character 12 until it reaches a null termination character. Each of our two-dimensional arrays, we have three of them, one after the other, is exactly 18 characters in size. Starting at 0 and going to 17 is 18 characters. So if we wanted to print the first word of the next array, we would start at position 18. So we could just simply say this. and that will bring us right here where we'll print the word one like you see now just to make this easier to understand we're going to slightly change each of these arrays so our first array we're going to leave it capitalized the way it is where the first letter is capitalized for the second though we're going to make it all capital letters and for the third we'll make it all lowercase letters. Notice that I changed it here as well. So if we want to print this word we know that we're going to simply go to offset 18. If we run the program you'll see that it's printing the correct word. Now if any of this is confusing to you just keep in mind all we are doing here is working with a single string of text. That's all this is. This isn't anything more complicated than what you've already worked on. You've already looked at strings of text in previous lessons, and if looking at it up here is difficult because of these slash zero characters, then just look at it down here. It's the exact same thing. You don't even need to look at this part of the code. I could, in fact, just move it all down, and you would be just fine. So remember, all we're doing here is working on a single string of text. So don't think of this as a complicated three-dimensional array. Just think of it as a string of text. Now remember that each two-dimensional array is 18 elements in size. Why? Because we have six characters three times, and six times three is 18. So if we want the first set of words, we're going to be here. If we want the second set of words, we're going to be here, and if we want the third set, we're going to be here. In other words, it's 18 times the two-dimensional array that we want. So if, for example, we say 18 times 0, that's the same thing as 0, and that will put us here, and we'll print the word 1, like you see. 18 times 1. We'll print the word one in all caps, like you see here. And 18 times two will put us right here at 36. And we'll print the lowercase version of the word one. So our first offset can be which two dimensional array we want to use then we can specify which word we want. Just like we did in the last lesson, we know that each word is six characters in size, so it's going to be six times the element index that we want. So zero would be the very first word. So if we said 18 times zero as our first offset, and six times zero as our first offset, well that's zero, so that'll put us here and we'll print the word one, like you see. If I change this to 6 times 1, then that'll put us here, and we'll print the word 2. 
like you see. Now what if I want to print the capital version of the word 2? Well then my first offset is not going to be 18 times 0, it's going to be 18 times 1. That'll place me here, and then I add 6, and that'll place me here. And then I'll print the capital version of the word 2, like you see. So the very first index is going to specify which two-dimensional array we want, and then the next index is going to specify which one-dimensional array we want, and if we wanted to we could even specify the exact character that we want. All we would do is say what is at this memory address and change it to a character. So right now because we're looking at the T in the word 2, it's going to print a capital T. Like you see. And if I wanted to print the W, then I would just add one more offset. And that would just simply be the number that I want. One in this case. And that'll put me at the W. Multidimensional arrays are just a way of understanding a one-dimensional array in such a way that you can use mathematical operations to reach specific points in that one-dimensional array. Now I know that we covered a lot in this lesson and so we'll go ahead and stop here but in the next lesson I'll go ahead and show you how to actually create an array like this using C's syntax. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask them, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson.